Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media, and welcome to another installment of Hot Takes, the Monster Cat Edition. We are just talking about Monster Cat stuff, and I give you a little bit of warning, we're getting spicy in this episode. We're getting spicy. I honestly feel like it's easier to produce a Silk song than a song in any other of the two sub-labels. With a progressive song, there doesn't need to be a structure, whereas anything else you need to have everything planned beforehand. I don't understand the explanation. So I get the idea that I think it feels easier to produce a Silk song, but because progressive doesn't have structure, doesn't need to be a structure, what, what do you, I, is it just like, I feel like Silk songs are, have more structure to them than Instinct or Uncaged do. Am I like, is this, this is this is a weird take. To, I, I get the top half. I, I do feel that sentiment. I get it. It probably is maybe a little bit easier to produce a Silk song. I just think just with a style of what Silk is and the branding of Silk versus Uncaged or Instinct. But like the structure part throws me for a loop. So I like sort of think this is a hot take and not a hot take at the same time. We are halfway through this year and I've been personally dissatisfied with how some people have been treating new artists this year on Monster Cat. Well, I know artists like Armin Hammer, Papa Khan, Gigi Madri, Punctual, Leo Trix, and the Hello World may not be people's favorites. It's not nice to see how people listen to their debut song once and then barely give them a chance if they are worthy to be on this label. For all we know, they could easily be the next generation of Monster Cat classics. If you don't like them, nothing wrong with that, but I would prefer seeing constructive criticism and opinions rather than, and I quote Dumu here, detail in a 2,000 word document every aspect of a song you dislike and find a new way of saying it's bad every time. Okay, I think there's actually two things going on here. One is with the artist and one with the constructive criticism part at the end. Uh, first thing with the artist, I, I do kind of feel that sentiment. I think with the newer artists, it's hard to kind of feel, now that Monster Cat is very big and there's so many people that have been on Monster Cat, just either for like a single song or here for years, um, it's just become a little crowded, I would say. When the new artists joined back in, let's say, 2014, 2015, with like maybe, I know the years are wrong here, but like a Nitro Fun or a Grant, it was like a big thing to have this new artist and have them release pretty consistently. But nowadays, there's just so many new artists, and it's not. It's, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. It's just that's the that's the nature of the label when it grows so much. And so I think it's just the new artists are being a little more clouded by the fact that there's just already so many new artists around. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think it's just the different style of Monster Cat now. I don't think Monster Cat is really as artist focused as it used to be in the past. I think it's more track and project focused and. That's just that's just Monster Cat growing and adapting with what they can. You can't really have exponential growth or even a ton of growth without having so many new artists. If you just have a, a select few artists and you're like, oh, we're only gonna go with these like 30, 40 artists, then you're just you're not gonna you're not gonna grow. It doesn't work like that. And the second part with the constructive criticism, yes, I would agree that I think the community um, does a really bad job of giving lots of criticism, like harsh criticism for songs they don't like and not enough praise for the stuff that they do enjoy. I think there's <laughs> like, it's, it's enough to like meme on some songs. Like I know Slushy got a lot of memes for X, uh, ELE, but, uh, and, and like Dead Man Walking got a lot of praise for that too. But I just think they're, the, Dead Man Walking was the first song in a long time where I've just heard tons of universal praise for the track. And I just don't think we're getting that with a lot of songs as of recently. It feels like our level of praise for something is just not as high, but our level of dissatisfaction with something we're like, oh, everyone's got to share their constructive criticism. And I mean, even this video is a great example of how people like to hear people not liking stuff. Like it's, it's just a, it's just a sad part of our human nature is people like to hear the worst stuff. Like when I do my recap videos at the end of the year, my worst songs or worst projects of the year video always gets more views just because people like hearing what I think are the worst. And so it's, it's a culture that is kind of ingrained into music and reviewing rating as a whole. But yeah, I think we need to do a better job of praising the stuff that we really enjoy. And I didn't like, you don't need to give a 2000 word page document on it if you don't like it. You can just say, it's not for me and move on. Here we go. This is the big spicy one for this episode. The big one. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. Uh, the quote is, was I or was I not wrong with saying that Coven are meh? They're even more meh now that they're corporate sellouts. First of all, I really like Coven. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the stuff that they've produced. I love the Butterfly Effect LP. Um, I was a fan of them as they kind of came up with their couple EPs. But uh, I, so first of all, off that, if you just mean not like Coven, I get that. That's just personal preference. I don't like probably a lot of artists you don't like, but I, I really enjoy Coven's music. Second of all, 
corporate sellouts. Uh, <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, um, the uh, recent track of theirs uh, has been uh, was in a partnership with Mobile One. Also a partnership with Rocket League, and that was the main part of this partnership, was it was Mobile One's been a partner with Rocket League, and this song was a partnership with both Rocket League and Mobile One. And so, yeah. The biggest thing I want to say is the Monster community absolutely hates non-environmentally friendly things. They just hate it. With the NFTs and this, like, gas Mobile One company... I just, I think it's, I think you guys are going way too overboard with the hate for it and they're not corporate sellouts. It's a partnership. Like the one thing you need to understand is, so I have a business degree is my background and like partnerships are just a part of daily life. It's, it's how you get, it's how you do stuff. They're not selling out to the gas companies, the gas warlords of the world um, just to make more money. It's, it's a partnership primarily with Rocket League. And yeah, I don't know. You guys just have so much hate. I like, yes, we, let's be environmentally sustainable. Let's care for the environment. But like every, like. We like I use gas every day. I have to like I just I do. I'm not I'm not gonna like you get like most of you use gas and I don't know if maybe a lot of you aren't even driving yet, but like we use gas all the time. You need like ordering packages from Amazon just costs lots of gas to get every, every like they're just so I don't know. I think it's a little hypocritical that we just hate so much on this random partnership, this random song. And um, I honestly I feel for I feel for Coven. Um, to, if full transparency, Max reached out to me and just gave a little. Um, clarity on the understanding behind it and uh, I, I it does suck for them because they can't really comment on anything and so you need to understand that as an artist they're not ignoring you um they're they're not like they don't want to oh yeah we're, we're going to come out and say that we can't that that's just part of the brand deals you can't do that like when you sign a, a partnership and people are criticizing criticizing you for that partnership you can't come out when the song is released and be like oh yeah actually we hate mobile one we didn't realize they were this bad for the environment you can't do that so coven is not ignoring you they're 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 not sellouts. They're just doing a partnership, and maybe it wasn't the greatest partnership. But I think we were way too. Uh, yeah, I. This is a long part here, but I also don't love cancel culture. Um, it's just not a thing that I enjoy, and I just think we're trying to cancel Coven for this little thing. Like it's to me, it's ridiculous. I think we're we get way too wrapped up in small little things and not here to just enjoy the music. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking out of my butt. The BXU EP by Bishu is one of the most unique and best releases Monster Cat has put out in a while. Had a really good creative concept as well as uh, some of the songs be are being really good. Uh, Monster Cat should try to do more creative things like this with artists more often. Um, yeah, like I would agree. I I think part of it is that like it's hard to do this because this is I don't know how much of it was on Monster Cat versus Bishu. My guess is Bishu came to Monster Cat and said, "Hey." I'm going to do this like five track EP where I have like Twitch check, create the song. And uh, do you guys want this on the label? Like how does this kind of go? Monster Cat is as a, because they've grown so much, they haven't really done a, a few more experimental things in the past. Like, like Karma Fields. Oh man, back in the day, people hated Karma Fields for how experimental it was. And it was just like, people just ripped on it. Um, and uh, nowadays the experiment, the experimentation is a little more calm and a little more, uh, <laughs> packed in together like this Bishu project, but I like, I, I liked it. It was a really, really cool concept, really unique. Um, but oftentimes I think the, as a community, we like to say that Monster Cat should do a better job of this, Monster Cat should do a better job of this, but like, yeah, they can find that and sign that, but like, it's on the artist. Like the artists make up the label. Like the label is just more a vessel for things to come out, a vessel for the release of the music. It's, it's honestly a lot on the artist to come to Monster Cat and say, I want to do this, but maybe they're not signing the more out there creative stuff. I don't know, but I, yeah, to me, I, I like the project. Love to see more stuff like it, but it's ultimately in the artist's hands to do so. Honestly, I feel like Monster Cat should go back to the three-day release schedule now that they have Uncaged, Instinct, and Silk. Six releases a week increases quantity while also somewhat decreasing quality. With a three-day schedule, it can eliminate the quantity issue to a degree. Although I would also say to dissolve the sub-labels since Instinct specifically has been screwed over a couple of times the last two years. Um, I don't think so. I, I think this is that's moving backwards in time. Monster Cat is evolving and uh, adapting with the times and with what they need to be as a label. And to introduce more names, which is kind of the name of the game for them right now, on the label is like you you need that release schedule. And so I understand the that you feel or that there's a feeling that there's a lack of uh, quality with the increase in quantity. 
But uh, I, I don't think that's true. I think that's just maybe a different style of songs they're signing nowadays, a different, different feel that they want for the label. Um, and with how big Monster Cat actually is in the EDM industry now, I think uh, I think it's just the, what they're going for, the style that they're going for, the music, the sound Monster Cat wants to be known for. Uh, they can, I think, very easily find what you would believe to be the quality tracks uh, while signing less song. I think you can keep the quantity while still signing quality tracks, um, but I, I think your vision of quality and their vision of quality is different, um, and that's that's how music goes. It's mainly subjective. I feel like Monster Cat is trying to branch out in the wrong direction. As an EDM label, it's great hearing all sorts of interesting and unique takes on the genre and many different subgenres from tons of incredible artists we've seen in the past, like Karma Fields, Lucid, Soup Andreas, and Just Gem. But the recent expansions into the more mainstream of scenes like pop and rock have been far less appealing, in my opinion, and don't feel like they have true foundations in the label like many other genres and styles do. Experimental electronic music doesn't always hit, but it can be extremely rewarding when it does, and I'd love to see the label dig their claws in it again. Yeah, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna say this, uh, because I talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, I'm gonna be quick with this one, hopefully. I've been long with these. Uh... Karma Fields got screwed over when when Monster Cat signed them. A lot of people there was there was some praise for it, but it, even myself included, I back then I was like, this is weird. This is experimental. This is a little too over the top. This is whatever. I I did enjoy it quite a bit. In hindsight, we've been like, yes, we need Karma Fields. That stuff was amazing. Karma Fields, Lucid, Just Jet, all this stuff is the best stuff Monster Cat's ever put out because it's this weird experimental EDM sound. But at the time, a lot of that stuff didn't go over too well. I would say with the main audience. Uh, of Monster Cat, so they've been, <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> we like punched Monster Cat when they like made experimental music, we're like, this isn't that good, and then we're like, oh, now we want experimental, please, bring that back, less pop, please, and so, I don't know, I think it's just the direction the label is going more pop oriented, I get it, um, that does adhere to more growth, and so, it's just, yeah, again, that goes back to the last point of your version of quality tracks is different from what Monster Cat's version of quality, and maybe this is the direction they think that that is best for them to grow and to produce and to put out quality music. Monster Cat hasn't made a single smart brand change since the Instinct Uncaged split. Visualizer changes, podcast changes, incorporating silk, new branding, all of it. I can't recall a single decision that has improved Monster Cat since 2018, apart from signing a few really good artists. Oh man, we're talking a lot. We're gonna, I told you this is gonna be a spicy episode. Um, I, like, I would disagree with this. I think, again, I've talked, I've just, I've kind of been nailing, putting the nail in the coffin here of just like the, the Monster Cat's changing and growing in different ways than you would think. Um, I think if you look at it in the reverse, if Monster Cat would have done nothing and had a three uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday release with no Uncaged Instinct, no Silk, no nothing, um, Monster Cat would would like would die would be dying right now because we there wouldn't be enough innovation there wouldn't be enough adapting to the times there wouldn't be enough new artist releases there wouldn't be enough change they would just be like it, people would be say like monster cats done nothing it's been so stale they're not innovative they're not proactive they're just being reactive and so i don't know it's kind of like a other side of the grass is greener on the other side of understanding where Monster Cat's trying to go, and it doesn't always align with our visions. Maybe we'll look back at this in five, ten years ago. This was really smart, and things are different in one way or another, but I don't know. You always have hindsight bias, and people always look back at like 2014, 15, Monster Cat go, that was the golden ages. We need to go back to that, and so I we just won't hit that again, that that feeling, um, and that's, that's just because of the growth of Monster Cat, and that's because of so many other factors, EDM changing, the industry changing, everything, so... Yeah. And that's it for this episode of Hot Takes. I told you it was going to be a spicy one. Uh, and just a note at the end, please hear me, please hear me, please hear me. Don't click away. Uh, this is for open discussion. We are not here to absolutely crap a monster cat for this thing, to hear say this is bad. This is this. The purpose of these videos is for discussion, is to have open discussion about things. Yes, we're going to have, we're going to discuss things that people feel various opinions about. Some people really hate some stuff. Some people really love some stuff. There'll be some kind of more uh, taboo topics here, but this is for discussion. This is to have open conversations. So let's be civil uh, in the comment section and uh, let's talk about this as, as nice adults, the people that love the label and love the community that um, uh, <laughs> is surrounding it. So uh, I'm Bowtie Media and I will see you guys in another video.